Thank you, Arpit, so much. Uh, sorry for the uh, little snack, but um, I just had to activate some uh, features into, into Zoom. Uh, it's such a pleasure for me uh, to be here. Uh, it's actually my first time uh, keynoting at the Linux Foundation. Um, and I'm here with uh, uh, Kandan, who is going to uh, you know, share the presentation with me. And we'd like to talk a topic which is really dear, uh, uh, you know, very close to Google and um, something that has been a topic of discussion with many of the different carriers and service providers that we have been uh, talking in the industry. So let me start with a, a you know, a provocative statement here. Uh, network functions and cloud infrastructure. Uh, you know, we feel that these two entities have been like ships passing in the night. Um, you know, in reality, uh, there's not a lot of uh, understanding of each other. And this has been a, an architecture in, uh, with a lot of evolution in these last years. So how do we uh, uh, change the game? How do we make the infrastructure or the cloud infrastructure uh, understand the uh, needs, requirements, and state of network function and how we can have network function uh, uh, do the same in respect to understanding and uh, operating on top of the cloud infrastructure. If you actually look at what's been happening in the market in these last five plus years, right, there's been a major transformation through the, uh, uh, you know, network function virtualization architecture. And we actually had a, I call it a non-container era, right? With some management and orchestration traction uh, where uh, there's been a lot of different uh, automation capabilities transitioning into, uh, uh, you know, more uh, network function oriented or virtualized network function oriented as we transition into the uh, uh, NFE world. Um, and now, uh, you know, we start to uh, see a picture which is even more complicated. You start to see, um, a, a, you know, the uh, coexistence of uh, virtualized network function as well as containerized network function. But I call it, a, you know, an out-of-band automation. So Kubernetes, which is widely adopted in, uh, in the world of, you know, um, application or enterprise application, uh, is actually uh, starts to become a core building block of how to build, um, you know, telecom networks. Obviously, this started from uh, 5G, but it's not related to 5G only, is now actually, um, you know, widely spread across fixed wireless cable uh, and, you know, many, many of the other uh, network function environments. But we actually believe that this environment is um, still not truly cloud native. Um, we believe that true cloud nativeness lies in the fact that Kubernetes can actually automate all the way down from uh, describing a network function or a service to the infrastructure, uh, uh, including all the underlying networking components. And of course, the big change as well as in the previous presentation is not just about some of the core network, but also um, extending all the way to the edge, uh, but also starting to see, um, you know, public cloud environments as well as the, uh, you know, footprint for deploying an end-to-end, -end, uh, uh, you know, cloudified, uh, truly cloudified networks. And now we, uh, you know, but where is the environment today? If you look at really the automation aspect today, it's, it's fairly complex. Um, there are a lot of uh, uh, still manual configurations. There's a lot of uh, different separate repositories. There are complexities in managing security throughout. And also there's a complexity in managing a true uh, uh, intent in how to deploy some of these services. And I'm capturing some of these um, you know, points here. There's a, an ever-growing network complexity. Um, in fact, um, some of the aspect of cloudification is actually adding to the complexity by adding additional form factors, additional network function, additional use cases, the mix of network and 
mobile, mobile access edge computing applications and you know actually evolution towards uh, you know private 5G and private networking in general. Um, exploding number of sites and services from the original premise of deploying large data centers, uh, 10 to 20 to 30 data centers to now tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of nodes. Uh, obviously, um, everyone is looking at the evolution of radio access or access in general these days. Uh, still relying on solid architecture with um, lack of multi-vendor support. And of course, uh, actually some lack of standardization, uh, cloud versus telecom standards. Um, and this is creating, um, in our opinion, a, a set of uh, unmanageable uh, drift and configurations. Uh, in addition to the need of having uh, new operating and support models, it's easy to talk about uh, DevOps and CICD, but if you actually think of the typical life cycle of supporting uh, software in a telecom network, we are moving from a very fixed type of uh, releases to, uh, you know, monthly or uh, even faster type of cadence. So um, given this picture, uh, we have been approached by the telecoms community uh, as Google and as Google Cloud uh, as, uh, you know, uh, this is a nice narrative, but then the question was, how can you help solve this? You know, you've stepped into uh, uh, the world of cloud native um, with, you know, uh, major uh, entry with Kubernetes, but also um, how can you actually look at how have you actually built your network, Google? We have thought of the only way to uh, operate at scale the way you operate now, uh, both as a hyperscaler, but as a, one of the largest uh, uh, networks in the world, was to actually uh, step into this. And uh, we believe uh, the right way is to actually adopt Kubernetes as the underlying uh, methodology to, um, to solve this problem. So I'm really glad that, um, you know, today, in fact, even representing the work done with Linux Foundation, we are announcing a new project called Nephew. And it's a new open source technical project, uh, part of Linux Foundation. We work very closely with RPIT and team and we are aligning an ecosystem to simplify the automation of telecom network functions. And I call it the Kubernetes way. Um, we, as we started this journey, uh, you know, a few months ago, uh, we started to uh, understand the core concept and started to familiarize this with uh, different carriers, uh, different network function providers, different infrastructure and uh, operational providers. And I'm really glad to see that today, uh, as we are unveiling uh, this new project, which Kanda will uh, go into the details, we are glad to actually have such a rich community already behind this. As you can see, we really focus in making sure that we had um, major carriers and service providers supporting this uh, in many of the regions around the world. And we actually wanted to make sure that each one of these carriers are uh, you know, for looking, embracing cloud, uh, embracing a truly cloud native way of, uh, you know, deploying this. At the same time, uh, such a project would not have legs if we didn't have great support from our network function providers. As you can see in this picture, also from the largest ones or to the uh, new coming uh, uh, vendors uh, and anything in between. And of course, many others uh, from the community. So um, I think I'm really glad um, you'll see the uh, more uh, details uh, going forward. Uh, but and I wanna basically pass the ball to Kandan is gonna uh, describe what Nephew is uh, and uh, core objectives and, and you know give you more details. Uh, next slide, please. So Gabriele talked about uh, the challenges today, and I would like to add more to it uh, in terms of the network automation and uh, the cloud infrastructure configuration that are occurred to support the uh, automation. Uh, so if you look at actually today, uh, there is a potential use of containers, but containers alone is not a completely a cloud native automation that is incorporated to it. Uh, 
and the Kubernetes full potential has not been fully uh, fully been utilized by the industry today. Uh, most of the automations, those are fire and forget automation. So basically the monitoring has to really pick up uh, the once the container has been implemented. In this case, like we are talking about uh, uh, network function as a container. Uh, the biggest problem of all this thing is the, the whole CI CD pipeline with the declarative configuration. So today, mostly the infrastructure as a code, uh, usually they are complex template, uh, very difficult to read. Uh, limited reuse, not composable, and uh, primarily lacking vendor, you know, support and neutral templates, which are very open in the uh, in the community. Uh, so the nephew goal is like a primarily a three uh, important function here. Uh, the one is like a simplify the automation and its logic, and you can see that we are giving uh, primary importance to simplifying the automation as a number one goal of this particular community. Uh, the second one is like a mission manageable automation configuration. This is very, very important. And we will go through that in the detail in a minute. And then cloud native all the way across the architecture, not like a bit and pieces, but uh, uh, primarily across the whole architecture. That is what primarily uh, that this architecture of this nephew will uh, focus on. Uh, so three important factors that nephew is going to, uh, from architecture perspective, that's going to look at. Um, uh, the smart, simpler Kubernetes-based uh, cloud-native automation, uh, which is primarily intent-based automation and the active reconciliation of the configuration when there is a problem. And we can call this as a smart and simpler and because it has been using the Kubernetes-based automation. So this is one of the important aspects. Uh, the Kubernetes here is not only used for hosting the container, but also actually automating the cloud infrastructure, automating the whole uh, container as well and the dependent dependency configurations uh, related to that network function. And uh, this community is going to actually use the fully declarative configuration uh, that is basically based on Kubernetes resource model, which has been well uh, accomplished in the industry and the enterprises use this like in a very, uh, very uh, important way to actually automate their application. The other aspect is like to coming together with the cloud vendors, as well as the network function vendors and telecom. Uh, the intention is to actually maintain multi-cloud, multi-vendor, intraoperable uh, templates, automation templates to completely automate this particular, uh, particular functionalities together. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this picture sort of explains uh, further detail uh, what I explained on the previous slide. Uh, so there are three important components that uh, this is going to automate. And again, as I pointed out, uh, Nephew is based on Kubernetes-based automation. So we are using Kubernetes for the automation of the containers, not only just hosting the containers. And when you look at this architecture, uh, there is a mentioning of the CRDs and operators. And uh, the CRDs and operators are not new. This has been in the industry, and this has been supported by the CNCF Kubernetes community for a while now. Uh, but for the enterprise application. But Nephew project is going to actually enhance that further of the CRDs and operator uh, in terms of supporting the network function, uh, the cloud infrastructure provisioning, as well as the, the Kubernetes provisioning as well. And this is all going to be done through the conformance to the telecom standard. Uh, that is very important because there's a lot of great work has been accomplished in the industry in the standards and open source as well. So this project is complementary to the other open source project as well as standard, but the implementation is done through the Kubernetes to keep it very simpler. And in terms of automating the cloud infrastructure, which is the bucket number one, and automating the workload resource automation, which is actually the bucket number two. And bucket number three is the network function configuration itself. Again, it's all done through the conformance to the standard. And this community will not focus on the service orchestration layer, which is actually the top portion shown on this picture. And uh, the work which is done in the other communities will be used by this community uh, in terms of the service orchestration layer functionalities. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, so as I pointed out, this is a Kubernetes based and the Kubernetes is well known for telecom, well known for cloud providers, and it's well known for network function vendors. And this really brings the very simple, open and widely adopted Kubernetes as an automation engine for automating the cloud infrastructure, as well as automating the, uh, the edge resources for the network function, either edge or the core resources as well and the network function itself will be automated. Uh, 
So all these three people have to come together. And that's what you see in the launch partners that, you know, it's a mix of people from telecom, uh, cloud providers, and network function vendors. And this will benefit the whole industry in terms of pushing this uh, cloud native automation uh, across, across the industry. And uh, we welcome and the community is officially launched today and you are welcome to join this community in terms of taking this community to the next step of cloud native automation. Uh, you can actually find additional detail in the nephew.org website uh, where there is a lot of information about you know, who is part of this community, like the way Gabriele was showing on the slide. Uh, there is a FAQ that explains you know, like the additional information and technical details about this thing. Uh, you are welcome to join this community. Uh, again, there is no membership fee for the first year, and you can find additional details on that particular uh, web page, and you can actually join us free and contribute and be part of this community. And again, we welcome everybody to join this community and push the industry towards the cloud native automation. Uh, so with that, uh, uh, back to you, Arpit. Okay, thank you. And first of all, congratulations and thank you for, for seeding this project. Uh, you know, as we see, you know, the yes, Kubernetes is going quite well and, you know, a lot of networking projects in the telecom spaces are going quite well. And, you know, you see holes uh, or, or blends that I would say uh, to, to move the automation forward, you know, very, very good. Um, I think we have a few questions. Uh, I'm just going to sort of pick the ones we have a couple of minutes to answer a few. Uh, the first question, in fact, there were two questions in relation to other existing projects um, that and how it fits in. Um, so if you can sort of share something around, you know, how does it fit uh, with something like Airship, MCO, and then obviously, you know, you mentioned ONAP as the service orchestrator on the top, but, you know, in general, how do you see this complementing the other existing open yeah. source projects? And Arbit, I think probably the, one of the best uh, uh, person to answer this is actually Kandan, who was actually deeply involved. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> really actually I know, I know, he, he, he was one of the well. original. Um, in general, I would say that um, we really want to look at Kubernetes to be center of this, right? And, and therefore, how instead of rebuilding uh, capabilities, how can we actually leverage and extend what Kubernetes does given the massive community behind it, right? And then Kandan, maybe you can cover uh, specifically some of the topics on, uh, you know, Acrano and, and uh, AMCO as well. Yeah, so this is definitely a complementary project as Gabriele is pointing out. Uh, this uses Kubernetes uh, not just to host the containers, but to automate uh, the, the container network function, uh, which are network function focus here. And uh, this is definitely complementary to other projects. And uh, we welcome actually collaboration with other open source communities. And we also actually um, uh, would like to actually collaborate with the, pretty much like the standard communities as well. For example, you know, like this, uh, this is going to take a specification from a ORAN community as an example and incorporate that as a sort of an implementation on the Kubernetes for automating the, the RAN-based workloads. And, uh, and again, uh, we welcome pretty much everybody to join this community and be part of this community. And in parallel, we would like to collaborate with other open source community as well. And uh, you can actually find additional detail about, uh, you know, how, uh, how we would like to collaborate. And we would like to hear like a further opinion from the community, but there are some additional information which is already available in the NFU website. You are welcome to go and look at the website for additional detail. Cool. Um, maybe we have time for one more question, uh, which is uh, what is being done in NEFIO to hit carrier grade requirements? I think that'll be, uh, a, 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 it's a broader question, not just NEFIO, but you know, what, what are your thoughts on, on sort of the carrier grade uh, requirements of, of what we are gonna do here? The NEFIO starts with uh, primarily Kubernetes. Uh, which is a carrier grade implementation. That's what primarily used by everybody uh, in terms of the implementation, irrespective of what the vendors are, Kubernetes is being the common uh, component that has been used uh, for the implementation. So the start itself is a carrier grade and using that Kubernetes for the complete automation uh, adds to that uh, 
And in terms of uh, you know further scale and implementation of uh, this whole automation framework, uh, there are components that Google have already open sourced, and we are bringing additional open source component to this particular community. Uh, in terms of like enhancing the Kubernetes, enhancing tools around the Kubernetes to make this as like a more comprehensive, uh, large scale automation engine. And again, the simplicity is what primarily uh, we are looking at in terms of the thing, even though it can automate like a large number of locations, but the automation itself is like a, something we wanted to really keep it very simple. Uh, again, as I pointed out, you are welcome to, uh, uh, to that website uh, where it has like additional detail. Again, the website name is nephew.org. Uh, which has like additional detail. And uh, we are planning to uh, kick off this community very soon. And uh, there is a face-to-face -face meeting is going to be arranged. And uh, we are welcoming uh, pretty much everybody interested on this topic. And uh, we we would allow to share like additional detail uh, in a very, very deeper way. Okay, yeah. very good, thank you. I know there's a lot of questions coming. I think we are gonna be out of time, but again, as Kandan said, go to the website, uh, ask questions. Um, and I think most of the questions are really around the resource and the CRDs and standardization, which is exactly what we are trying to do in the project. So, hey, um, <clears throat> thank you very much. And, you know, looking forward to growing the community uh, with Google Cloud and, and uh, the entire ecosystem. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Tandon. Thanks, Arpita. Thank you. And, yeah. thank you.